In this video, I am explaining a few questions from the spring 2017 released questions from the geometry and, of course, test. We talked about question two in my other video, and question one is really a matter of visualization where you can visualize the three-dimensional figure rotating a 360-degree rotation about this line AC here. And so if you can really imagine what that would look like as that spins around, it would be a cone as a three-dimensional image. Question three. So this requires some knowledge of our um, properties of similar triangles. Triangle, this is supposed to be, <laughs> I should say triangle, X, Y, Z is shown. So this 100 degree, a 40 degree, now, um, properties of triangles. We know that these the three angles add up to 1E, so that means this missing angle would also be 40 degrees. So which triangle measure must be similar to triangle XYZ? So we have several different ways to prove that, but here we're all, we only have angles. Um, and one of our properties says that if two triangles are, or two, two angles of a triangle are congruent to two triangles, to two angles of another triangle, the two triangles are similar. Uh, it's the angle-angle postulate. And so a triangle with two angles that measure 40 degrees would definitely be similar to this given XYZ triangle. Question four, during a 90-day semester, a student records whether he arrives at school on time and whether he goes to bed by 10 a.m. the night before. The results are shown in the table. So there are a couple of different ways to do this. This is a question about kind of probability and the fact that these two independent events are occurring, um, getting to school on time and going to bed by 10 p.m. So you see here that the uh, student arrives, we're supposed to explain in the box um, the relationship there and justify our reasoning. So you can see I just decided to divide 72 by 9. Um, if he arrives at school on time, uh, the ratio of whether or not he went to bed by 10 or not would be 8. And then the same thing, I apply that same process to if he arrived late. Did he go to bed by 10 or not? And each of those gives a ratio of 8. So therefore, we could say that these two events are, are, do not depend on one another. They are independent. According to the given data, it makes no difference whether he goes to bed by 10 p.m. or after 10 p.m. Again, stating that they are independent would be a valuable piece. Question number five is a globe. It has a diameter of 12 inches. It fits inside a cube-shaped box that has a side length of 12 inches. So you can picture that cube with a sphere inside. What is the volume rounded to the nearest hundredth of a cubic inch of the space inside the box that is not taken up by the globe? Well, in this case, we literally just have to find the volume of each the cube and the sphere and subtract. We have enough information to find all of those pieces. If you've forgotten on your reference sheet here, you have uh, sphere and we have that formula. We also have general prisms, V equals capital B times H, which means the area of the base times the height. For a cube, the volume is side squared. I'm sorry, side cube. Since the base is a squared, that would be side squared times side again. So you see, I started by, I drew a little picture first, and then um, Based on the information, the diameter of my sphere is 12, but my formula deals with a radius, so I took half of the diameter to get the radius. The diameter of the sphere would be equal to the length of a side of the cube. So we have the side, we have the radius. Those are the only two variables in our two equations. If we plug those in, then I get 1,728 as the volume of my cube. I get 4 thirds pi r cubed, I get 904 and 32 hundredths, and that would be centimeters cubed, sorry, inches, cubic inches for the sphere. 
And now I subtract the 2 and get 8. 123 and 68 hundredths as the difference. So that would be my final answer. Moving on to question 4. We're going to go ahead and calculate this one together. The triangle here is shown, ABC. And then we're going to create a dilated triangle uh, by a factor of 4. What is the length of A prime, B prime? I believe that should just say A prime, B prime, not A double prime, B double prime. That's why I paused. <laughs> okay, so, sorry for that typo. A prime, B prime. So let's go ahead and just find the length of AB, and then we will multiply it by 4. Uh, that, we could use the distance formula, and again, that distance formula, in case you forgot, is on your formula sheet. So we'll take the square root. Let's figure out uh, these ordered pairs. Uh, one, it looks like 1, 4 for A. And for B, it looks like 4, 8. So I can label those as x1, y1, and x2, y2. So I'm going to plug those into my, not a bad idea to just go ahead and write that distance formula down right on your paper. So now as I calculate it, it's very easy to reference, substitute for x2, a 4, substitute for an x1, a 1, for y2 I substitute an 8, for y1 a 4, and now we have Four minus one is three, a minus four is four, so we have the square root of nine and sixteen, which is twenty-five. So square root of twenty-five is five. So I know the length of a b is five, so therefore the length of a prime b prime, we just multiply. Uh, so a prime b prime would equal four times five, which is twenty. That's the easiest way to do that. There's a variety of ways you could do that. Number seven. A study reports that in 2010 the population of the United States was 308,745,538 people and the land area was approximately 3,531,905 square miles. Based on the study, what was the population density in people per square mile? Again, this is similar to a question we saw in the last test. People per square mile. All we need to do here is divide these two numbers. It's a simple calculation. Round to the nearest tenth, we get 87.5. We literally enter this number in our calculator, divide by this number. Number eight. So we have a, a figure is fully contained in quadrant two. The figure is transformed as shown. So I drew a little picture here. We have a figure fully contained in quadrant two. You do need to know uh, how to label those four quadrants. And I think a visual is super helpful here, just drawing it out. So we have, uh, starting in quadrant two, a reflection over the x-axis. This is the x-axis. When I reflect, I end up with this pink object. Uh, I just drew a picture, a little square there. Um, and then a reflection over the line y equals x. Well, it's still going to be hanging out. If it was fully in the second quadrant, now it's fully in the third quadrant. And wherever I'm reflecting it, I'm going to still land in that third quadrant. And then a 90 degree clockwise rotation about the origin. So here's the origin. If I rotate 90 degrees, this is counterclockwise, I end up in the fourth quadrant. So the correct answer here is D. Take the time, draw the picture. Not a 
super, super tough one there. Just takes a couple minutes maybe to draw it and think it through. All right, now on this question here, we have an on online retailer conducting a random survey of its customers. The survey shows that 80% of the customers received their purchases within four days. 95% of those customers are satisfied with the quality of their purchases. What percent of all customers receive their purchases within four days and are not satisfied with the quality of their purchases? So we have not satisfied. Careful, read, read carefully, reread. <laughs> So if we have 95% um, are satisfied when they receive within four days, then that leaves us with 100% minus 95% or just 5% are not satisfied. Of, of means multiply, the 80% that received their purchases within four days. So we're just going to literally do 80% as a decimal be 0.8. And we're going to multiply that times 5% as a decimal, which is 0.05. And we get 0 0.04 when we multiply those, which is equal to 4% or answer choice A. Next up, question number 10. We have a quadrilateral that is inscribed in a circle, which comes with some properties. One of those properties says that opposite angles in that inscribed quadrilateral are supplementary. They add up to 180. So in this question, we literally just have to take and subtract 83 from 180. So 180 minus 83 is going to be equal to 97. Again, that's just a property of quadrilaterals inscribed in circles. Now this next question, you probably already saw my answer. Josh has a bag containing pieces of candy. The bag contains 10 red circular pieces, 10 red square pieces, 10 blue triangular pieces, and 10 blue star-shaped pieces. He draws a red piece of candy from the bag. What is the complement of this event? The complement would be the, what is essentially not red. So in this case, blue. So. We need to know that definition there of a, a complement of a given event would be the other option. Um, and so for this case, it would be that he drew a blue piece for question 11. Question 12. We're going to go ahead and just kind of show you these answers. You need to be very confident in your understanding of properties of parallelograms as well as your properties of translations here in order to make sure you can navigate the fact that um, we have this rhombus. I'm sorry, it's actually a rhombus, which means not only is it a parallelogram, but it also has four congruent sides. Um, and M and N are midpoints, see those, um, of the respective sides. A 90 degrees clockwise rotation around the center of the rhombus would just be, would put it here, and that would not land uh, onto itself. Select all the transformations that map the rhombus onto itself. A 180 degrees clockwise, clockwise rotation, if we rotated, so S landed where Q is, and Q landed where S is, they would, again, since it's all sides congruent, that would qualify. A reflection across PR, that's a diagonal. So that would work. Uh, a reflection across NM, that would not work. Okay, uh, based on mainly the fact that those angles are not congruent to all congruent to one another. Opposite angles are congruent, but not uh, adjacent. A reflection across QS again. QS is a diagonal, so that would qualify. Moving on to question 13. So question 13 asks, which statement is true about two angles? We're referencing our, <laughs> got the answer checked for you already. Um, same concept actually from this very same practice test that angle A has the same cosine as the sine of angle B. So 
if we label those sides lowercase b, a lot of times this is a, we, we, lo we label sides with the lowercase letter of the angle that is opposite. So this would give us the sine, the opposite over hypotenuse, the sine of angle, sorry, this is the sine of angle b. In this case, the last question it had the reverse. So the sine of angle b, Opposite over hypotenuse would be B over C. And the cosine of angle A adjacent over hypotenuse would be B over C. So anytime we have the two angles that are complements, their sine and cosine are equal. Square ABCD has vertices at A which is 1, 2, and B, which is 3, negative 3. What is the slope of BC? So literally, we're talking about a square here. Four. So uh, I don't need to draw this on graph paper necessarily. So A is at 1, 2. B this kind of is a bummer not to draw it on graph paper. Um, Let's just go ahead and do that real quick. Get out my graph grid. You can use Desmos. And this is just mainly for the sake of, of teaching. You can do this if it helps you. Absolutely, absolutely. So I have 1, 2 is one of my vertices. And 3, negative 3. 3, negative 1, 2, 3. That is one side of my um, square. We know that the sides of a square are perpendicular. So we know that the next side, wherever it is, we could go this direction or we could go this direction, but it has to be perpendicular. So we need to know the slope, which is down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 2. So the slope of A, B, is down 5 over 2. So that means the perpendicular slope, so the slope of BC, needs to be opposite and reciprocal. So positive 2 fifths. So I could go up 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So along that line. In fact, it would be exactly, that would be, well, that point or on the other side. Either one would work. Um, but the question only asks, what is the slope? And we know it's 2 fifths. That's through question 14. I'm going to pause here and pick up with question 15 in the next video.